Hello, and a very warm welcome to this live launch event organized by Global Gap. Welcome to the future of farming is smart. Today, in a few moments, we're going to hear from a lineup of expert panelists. They're going to talk to us about two of Global Gap's flagship products, about the new versions of IFA and GRASP. And we're also going to hear about how these new versions of IFA and GRASP fit into Global Gap's long-term vision of smart farm assurance solutions. Uh, my name is Chris White, and I'm the Managing Director of FruitNet. And I'm very happy to be doing my small bit today to mark this important moment in the history of Global Gap. I remember when I reported on the launch of Global Gap all those years ago about how the business recognised the crucial importance of food safety. And now, all these years later, it's good to be here to step forward into this exciting new future for Global Gap. Global Gap has been a permanent fixture in almost the whole time I've been reporting on the business of fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, Global Gap's goal of how to promote safe, responsible farming practices worldwide is fundamental to the future of every single business in the sector I know best, namely fresh fruits and vegetables, as well, of course, as floral and aquaculture, where Global Gap also plays such a fundamental role. Today sees Global Gap take a new step down the path of business innovation and sector-wide collaboration. The standards and add-ons presented here today are an important milestone for Global Gap, but these standards and add-ons are also important for every single one of us in the entire supply chain of fresh fruits and vegetables, floral and aquaculture. Uh, much has been done to prepare the framework of IFA version 6 and the Smart Farm Assurance Solutions. The last two years were spent on a world consultation tour. It featured some 200 hours of webinars across multiple time zones. And all of this work has resulted in these new and ambitious solutions that we see today. These solutions are your solutions. They've been developed by you. They've been developed by your industry and they've been developed for your industry. It's clear that the business faces some big questions. And the two biggest questions are surely these. Firstly, how can producers continue to demonstrate compliance and at the same time deal with all the many complexities of international data-driven supply chains? And second, how can Global Gap streamline its own certification process and at the same time respond to big new issues for consumers such as sustainability, worker well-being, and animal welfare? So just a few days ago, Global Gap's leaders got together at their global headquarters in Cologne in Germany to talk uh, and to look for answers to some of these big questions. So let's hear what they had to say. Let's watch their conversation uh, and there to ask all the right questions is the host of these discussions. Let me hand over to our moderator, Bianca Thomas. The challenges and the expectations facing the farming and the food industry, yeah, they have amplified. The landscape is changing, yeah, and these changes, they require a whole new approach in order to remain competitive. Global Gap has acted with conviction. Global Gap is hailing in a new era of processes. And these are designed uh, to fill and fulfill the future needs of this industry and also to fulfill its organizational purpose. Therefore, I am very happy to welcome you to the launch of Global Gap's new and yeah, improved flagship standard. It's the IFA version 6 and also to the launch of the organization's update to risk assessment on social practice, and this is known as GRASP 2.0. These releases, they really mark the beginning of Global Gap's journey into a long-term vision of smart farm assurance solutions. My name is Bianca Thomas, and I'm your day's moderator here, and I'm very happy to introduce to you several individuals from Global Gap, and we have here the chairman of the board and a farmer at heart, and this is Guy Calbo. Hello. 
Thank you for, to, for having us. And we have Leon Moll. You are a retailer at heart, I can say. Yes, happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. And Elmi is also here, Elmi Kötzer-Bursma. You are the Managing Director of Product and Development. Hello. Hello. And Christian Müller, the Managing Director of Sales and Marketing. Hello. Hello, thanks to be here. Christian, let's start with you. So this is a whole new approach of the new standard, the IFA version 6, a new version coming out. But it was also a whole new exercise, not an isolated exercise. You did really a lot. Let's fill us in. Let's step one step back and get the bigger picture, um, since it is really the biggest one in the history of Global Gap. It's 25 years. What exactly happened? Well, what we do today, the IFA standard version 6, is not just a new version. Basically, it's a complete overhaul of our Global Gap system. So smart farm assurance solutions sort of welcomes in the new era of processes. It's basically future proving of our standards. Why exactly now? What happened that you really thought this needs really a total overall new approach? Well, after 25 years or 20 years within the standard and several five updates, I think it was time to radically simplify as well the standard. It became more complicated. Simplification was important. Then we all know we have more and more digitalization. That means also farmers have more digital tools, so we needed to use that. And once you have that, the connectivity, connecting for an easier use is important. And last but not least, it's a time where data becomes more important. So the use of data is one of the other reasons why we wanted to integrate that. And what exactly are you really focusing on? There are so many subjects, I assume. Yeah, we've been uh, trying to focus on uh, mainly four areas. The first one is smart standards and add-ons. It's basically uh, an update of our portfolio for solutions to make it more fit for the farms. The second piece is uh, a smarter sustainability environment, like new upgraded criteria, new products, new standards uh, as modules, but as well also to look into continuous improvement. The third part is smart systems and services. Basically, this is the framework behind the standard. It needs to help and will help the certification bodies, the farmers, uh, in that whole area of our operation. And last but not least, the fourth one is the smart use of data. Basically using data for conformity, for transparency, but also to evaluate the entire system. So what's the impact of it? And uh, yeah, what kind of journey is it then really? Because we just said in the beginning, it is a journey towards long-term vision. How would you describe that? Well, if you combine and bring this in, yes, it is a journey we all embark together on. It is a rollout over a period of time. This, uh, we start with two of those four elements, um, which is now the, uh, as of today, the smart standard and add-ons, the version six of our IFA flagship standard plus the GRASP 2.0. So those are the two. And then we all secondly look and focus on the uh, smarter approach to sustainability, to have uh, the criteria and key areas we bring in. So that this all together, the uh, smart farm assurance solutions is in a nutshell streamlined, it's impact driven, it's connected, Basically, now it's on your fingertip. It is a big, big project. And you mentioned these two pillars basically focusing on. Let's dive deeper into these uh, smart subjects. And um, you realized it's a big approach and you went on a world consultation tour. It took for two years and you really talked to all kinds of levels of the supply chain. What exactly happened? Well, have we been seeing that we're already operating in more than 140 countries with these standards? We needed to now talk and listen again. What can we do better? We wanted the ownership, the ownership of this standard for everybody using it. And that means we needed to take a real deep dive in the consultation, in the collaboration to talk with everybody. 
and everywhere. With digitalization, we could even go to even more places and then collect that feedback and bring that into a really concise product. And that means you also talk to civil society, by, for example, to NGOs. How important was that? Well, it was important because we never gave up and will not give up this food safety focus, which was very science-based. But now looking more into sustainability, we needed more civil society input. NGOs play a, a critical role here. And so to bring them on board, and we were very fortunate that they were really willing to contribute, we could learn from them. That helped us a lot. Then in the end, this standard needs to be fit for purpose. It needs to be future-proof and practical. And that mix in that partnership between the farmers, retailers and civil society would achieve that. May I quote you, you said once, only those who really feel that they have actively participated in the new standards will ultimately identify with it and then implement it with the right attitude. Is it fair to say that it's not only for the industry, but created by the industry? Yes, it's uh, thousands of hours of people that put in that input and they thought about it. What could we do better? Yeah, it's, it's our standard, they, they work with it. And, and, and we ask them, and it's our membership, our community membership approach. They feel part of that community. And in our technical committees, and we can say much more about it, how this has been built up, and our focus groups and our national interpret uh, working groups, we had this network with our local staff now in almost 30 countries around the world diving in and bringing also a face of the organization and have that integrated feeling. Yes, we are together on this journey in two years to improve the standard. And now with a timeline to build this up as a journey more smarter and integrated, more streamlining it, more impact driven and more connected. Mm -hmm. Global Gap listened to the whole chain, basically, and what the industry needed. You were also involved in this uh, global well, consultation? Well, indirectly, uh, I assisted some uh, world consultation tools, but I assisted also the National Technical Working Group uh, uh, discussion on this. This was the most ambitious uh, version of Global Gap, I, I believe, but all also the most consulted uh, we talked about the world consultation tours, but there were, uh, help me, Elme, uh, four uh, public uh, consultations and then about 50, at least 50 technical committee uh, meetings. The board uh, had uh, several meetings on this. So in the end, the board, uh, on, on, on the advice of the technical committee, accepted uh, the, this new version as being really the, the, the state of the art uh, for what is needed for the industry. What did you hear from the farmer side? What did they tell you, or even you yourself? What was the most important thing that had to be integrated? Well, as I said, it was very ambitious, but um, I think simplification is uh, absolutely necessary. And then duplication, avoid duplication. There is already so much to do on the farm that at least uh, have one stop uh, audit and do it all in one day, in, in a way. So that is, that's the most important. Technical side, well, we, we are used to adapt to the demand of the market, um, at least if it's realistic, and um, not only technically uh, it should be uh, feasible, but also econo economically. So uh, that, that's, and that's what we achieved in this version. Leon, do you, for the retailer, you speak for the retailer, or at least you're really an expert for this side or this um, part of the retail chain. Did you also bring back reality with your involvement? Well, I, I certainly believe that it started almost with our reality, and that's the reality of the market. I mean, this, this whole new standard helps us to accommodate the market and to follow up on the developments of the market. But let's not forget on then about food safety, safety of the product. And that's also market development. Our customers ask for more local products, more diverse products, less processed products. And we need a standard that is 
able to identify the risk, more targeted approach, but not necessarily more difficult, more complex. And that's, that's the base of, well, of the changes that were made. But the other thing that the markets really uh, ask for, for us, is a more holistic approach. They need the whole picture. So they need risk mitigation on the safety side, but they need also a clear view on developments on animal welfare, on workers' conditions. And that package is so important. Then now is the time, Elmi. We heard about why this journey started, how it was developed, and now, since you are the Managing Director for Products and Development, you can tell us what is IFA version 6? So as Guy and Leon said, and Christian alluded, it is a hugely consolidated and collaborated effort to come to version 6. It's an update of the version 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1 that we had, but it is also a whole new product that focuses and that changes from what we had in the past of control points and compliance criteria, very um, rigid and um, prescriptive in a sense for producers to comply with, to what we now call more a risk-based and outcome-based approach with compliance with um, principles and criteria. It means that the producer can now show compliance in various levels. Christian mentioned data use. So the producer can show compliance through data or through the traditional methods. But there's various ways to show compliance. And this is a, a big step forward. Um, Leon said there's various products and things that we focused on. Animal welfare, yes, is part of our aquaculture standard, so the integrated farm assurance for aquaculture. We have the flower ornamental standard that's being updated and the fruit and vegetable standard. Um, these are all hugely, um, it's progressing in a way on how it's being approached by producers, by retailers, by everybody who's involved, the certification bodies will also look at this in a different way and how they assess these assessments then. Having said that now it's changed in the way of being less prescriptive, we still have some criteria that we need to follow in the, in the outside world. It's not only us developing it and our stakeholders that we listened to, but we also have the first time where we decided to have for the fruit and vegetables and aquaculture standards two different um, options, two different editions, a, a smart edition, which is our flagship standard, and then also a GFS edition, which is for global food safety initiative recognition, because we want to cater for all those producers. Christian mentioned several times we want a fit for purpose product. So there's various fits needed, right? Producers have different criteria and different requirements that they need to comply with. And we want to be that standard, as Leon said, that, that gives the possibility for all producers to be able to comply with their market demands and market requirements. So we had to, to do these two levels. Um, there's very, not levels, two uh, editions. Very important to know that it's the same level of, of um, compliance in the end that will give the same reliability, the same um, for a producer that whether he does the one or the other, it's, it means the same to the buyer. It is basically the differences are in the, in the rules. Um, Global Food Safety Initiative has some additional rules on compliance and things that's interesting and important for them. But through all our stakeholder consultations, our producers in indicated and also our, mem our retailer membership indicated that that's not always needed. There's other ways to do things. So that's where it's more risk-based in, in this um, smart edition. And then uh, Christian also mentioned continuous improvement. All the years we've noticed producers are very innovative. They always improve. Um, they need to be in the front of everything. And we've never really asked them to show that. So we decided to bring in continuous improvement into the standard so they can show how these um, improvements are taking place on farm level for the first time. So. It sounds a little bit complicated, but it, you, you made it simpler. How was that possible? <laughs> Not easy. So Not all easy. these consultations and uh, <laughs> hard work. And our, our main aim is to make it simple. As Guy said, we want simplification, less duplication. We changed the standards from um, what we had before where we said they were we had it in various modules where producers could do the same things that they can do now, but it was set up in a different way. We've restructured that so that if a producer is 
doing certification for his pairs. It's, it's one standard and it's fit for their production process. So the checklist will also be customized for that producer. So things that are not relevant to him or her would not be in there. It's, it's, it's really, the aim is to focus on, on the producer and their production process and getting them certified in the way that they do it to the best and be able to show that. It sounds really like a profound evolution. And um, I can assume what is important for everybody is sustainability. We just talked about it already. Also, Global Gap is emphasizing on it. What specific in relation to sustainability is really in the version six now? That's a big question. <laughs> and as we all know, sustainability is a wide topic. Yeah. Um, We've always covered environmental sustainability and also worker health and safety, if we talk about sustainability as a whole in the standard, but now is the time to focus on certain topics. And how we define this is through the work of establishing a focus group, sustainability, environmental sustainability focus group for crops, with experts, everybody who was interested in, in developing this. So really a collaborative approach. They came together several meetings, gave input that went through various committees and things. Um, but in the end, we, we strengthened some of the points that we already covered and we brought in a few new ones like um, conversion of land for the high risk value areas. Um, so yeah, we, we focused on some specific ones, but it's mainly the, the, just the more emphasis in terms of making it more clear and also addressing some of the the, com the, the principles behind sustainability within the standards that we already had. Mm -hmm. Leon, from the retailer side, especially on sustainability, um, I assume that the request came also from many retailers because they see the demand and the change of habit of the consumers. So how much did it really happen and does it still happen? Well, I think it's, it's a given that that is there. So it's not us, it's our stakeholders, consumers, investors, they are much more interested in the effects of the production of the products on the workers in the supply chain, on the farmers, but also on the environment. Uh, having Global Gap, and Elmi already explained, with a very strong good agricultural practice foundation there, makes it possible for us with many thousands products on the shelf to do that whole overview uh, of of the production. I mean, we don't need to specify, go for the apples of ghee, go to this specific questionnaire for the pears, also of ghee, but uh, go to another question. No, we, we have global gap with a very broad approach. And so on that good agricultural practice backbone, we can build with all those topics like carbon, like water, like nutrients, like pesticides, like workers' welfare. Uh, so, for us, that fills the gap that was left between risk mitigation, food safety, and the expectations of our stakeholders. And we are then the, well, let's say, the transfer desk to, to get it to the consumer and the other stakeholders. So, do you think that it really matches the expectations and the requests from the retail part, the new IFA version 6? Time will tell. <laughs> but this is a significant step. <clears throat> and the current approach, and that's also in the system now, as I feel it, of, of this new version, is that it is possible to adapt. So if we together come to the conclusion that we need to step up, it's much easier now <clears throat> than in a former structure with compliance criteria, which were very black and white. And so, yes, we need to keep up still with developments in the current uh, situation. Yes, we have made significant steps. Version is going to prove itself. Uh, that's going to be taught to us by our stakeholders. That's how simple it works. And then we are able to step up if needed. Guy, may I quote you? I found a quote where you said, you stand for focusing on the core business of good agricultural practice. Does this also work together with sustainability and also food safety from the producer side? Well, on sustainability, <clears throat> sustainability is core business of every farmer. That's, that's his business. 
if some farmers are concerned about uh, certification, it's more about administration that should be done. But um, well, sustainability is not, not at all uh, um, a problem for, for most of the farmers. On the, uh, on the food safety, uh, that's an evidence. Uh, you cannot uh, supply any uh, supermarket if your uh, food safety is not uh, correct. So uh, there is, the problem is not there. The problem is more about workload of certification. Um, Christian, that brings us also to um, the sustainability, the role of the retailers, farmers, everybody you talk um, to, and uh, to the social issues. And we said already in the beginning that this is also the launch of GRASP 2.0, and GRASP stands for Global GLAP, um, Risk Assessment on Social Practice. Tell us what kind of major changes have been made on this, in this field. Well, first of all, also this standard has been uh, very intensively re uh, revised, right? So we've had also two full consultation rounds, so public consultation rounds. And looking like into the structure first, we have aligned to the new version IF, uh, IFA version 6. So we also now have these principles and criteria and with major and minor must. For those that know the standards for long, they know that's one of the core things that hasn't changed. We also now have introduced compliance and non-compliance for GRASP, which is new and gives much more transparency for the whole market participants. So, so with those elements, we are basically simplified the approach. We could in, uh, integrate better and align it, potentially combine checklists even with the version 6 IFA. So it's a better approach. That's part of this uh, smart, uh, smarter standards and add-ons in that holistic approach to move this forward. Elmi, what kind of uh, changes have been made to the content in regards to GRASP 2.0? What's in it from the development uh, side? Right, there's been some of the biggest changes is that worker representation, complaints, wages have also now been extended to subcontractors who works on the farm, so they're also being addressed. And then some of the criteria that we've brought in is on debt bondage, Sexual harassment is a hot topic these days that we need to deal with. And then also child labor, a hot topic that we definitely don't want to see on farms. So we, for example, how do we audit that is to look at um, time monitoring, cross-checking with schools, you know, if the child is of a school, um, or if the young adult is of school going age. So it's doing all these things to make sure that we, we bring those things on farm level. And um, this is vital for us to also drive then forward this whole holistic approach and sustainable and um, responsible farming. So you really go deep into the subject and you really check on all these criteria. Yes, we do. Maybe we could also add this risk, uh, a country risk concept, mm -hmm. which is not just on the farm level, but it's also now new that you have not just a harmonized approach across all countries, but you would look what's the risk exposure in a certain country and industry. And that would also trigger different levels of the in-depth assessment. Mm. So what then, um, Guy, to bring it back on the, on the farmer's level, what is then the most important um, on the social issues and the GRASP 2.0 that you really integrate in the all-day life on the field, on the ground of a farmer? If you have a very good national, uh, national security or, uh, situation or uh, controlling, then uh, it's just uh, verifying and then uh, justifying what, what you say. That's, that's what the audit, audit does. Mm -hmm. But these add-ons that have been made, how do they strengthen then uh, a farmer's way of work and really produce good products? Um, well, <laughs> in fact, it, I, I met, well, some farmers were complaining about about yeah, the, the stress and, and, and all the control points and all that. But when, when you meet them in person, they say, well, it's quite interesting to go around your farm once a year, verifying if you, whether you are still working in the right way. So it's, it's very positive then. But yeah, of course, you, the, 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 the work and the administration is, is boring, but in the end, you verify, you go through your, your uh, business, check with a checklist and see, 
do I compl comply with what retail is asking for? So it's positive to, look, to take the time to go through your, uh, your business. And not what only the retailer requests, but also in the end the consumer requests. Yes, of because course, this is where it starts, right? Yes, but I, I still assume that a uh, retailer is just uh, translating what, what consumer is asking uh, for. So, um, in, in a way, it's the same. Elmi, what, what can you add to this that really the standards and the add-ons um, really benefit? What is important? I think it's the ultimate tool for a producer to help show that they are doing some things so that the retail, retailer can have that assurance so that this, the consumer can buy again. And with the tool that we're creating, we really want to have it fit for purpose, as I said before, and the fit for purpose covers so many topics. It's not only fit for purpose in terms of the content, but then for the producer to help in the way that we've now set it up with more risk-based approach, where hopefully there's less of this administration that's the biggest one of the biggest issues for a producer, they're farming, they don't have time for paperwork. So if we can take some of that out through the various methods that a producer can show compliance, I think that makes it fit for purpose. It makes it fit for purpose in the fact that it is, um, it's covering all the elements that hopefully that the retailer and the consumers wanted. That's what we identified. So it's a holistic approach. And at the same time, we have a strong integrity behind it so that all the parties in the supply chain can know that once they see a Global Gap Integrated Farm Assurance Certificate, yes, that product is, is produced in a safe and sustainable, reliable way. Mm -hmm. Christian, from, from, the, um, from Global Gap's view, um, to bring this all together, what is the whole philosophy behind it that this IFA version 6 and GRASP 2.0 now is being launched? To have an integrated, holistic approach. It's this one-stop shop. You know, I, I come from a farming background as well. And, and, and so, you know, you have that whole responsibility. You need to go into the soil. You need to have, uh, talk with people. You have a market economic side, etc. And you just have this one head and try to bring this together. So it's important that I have my knowledge, my education, and I can do my daily work and have it in a connected way that I do it right and have it prove what Elmi said. So in that philosophy, in the partnership between the farmers and the retailers in the supply chain, we agree on what is best and what is practical, but is also science-based, which is very important for us. And then we, with data now, with simplification, we want to make it easier. Take out duplication, that's the first piece to actually bring this incentive to farmers. In the end, it's an economic incentive to farmers, market access, he said, less administrative, an economic incentive to then adopt these changes or just the proof if they already been doing it well, a simple way to show I am doing it. They do it for their to next generation or their grandchildren in a sustainable thinking way now also that will help everyone tap to the consumer. So Global Gap Solution really made a big transformation. And now please tell us what is the rollout? What is happening next? And um, yeah, what is happening this year and maybe the near future? Well, first of all, today we're launching the standard IFA version 6 and GRASP 2.0 and also with those elements of the first two pillars of the, of the four. So also with the more sustainable approach, there's no criteria we spoke about. Now the next uh, uh, elements will then be that uh, we will start with, uh, we have a final standard. So this is like an interim final, we'll do the fine tuning, but it's been used. Now the training is now the next step. So the, the farmers, the auditors, they are all ready to, to be trained. So the farmers can prepare for the next order to adopt this. The risk assessments are done. More and more translations to just make it practical. We also work on interpretation guidelines in the different countries, so to make it practical for our farmers. And then we have those uh, two other elements. So looking more at a smarter 
assistance and uh, which needs the, uh, to be there to actually fully bring this uh, risk-based approach also the ease to use the connectivity into place. It's been programmed now, it's been developed and we're really looking forward for its implementation. Uh, we're looking here to the end of the year uh, to, to hopefully do that and, uh, and of course uh, then the question of data the smart use of data is something will be a little bit slower. First of all, we need to have the right processes, data management processes in place. And then we start to look for the first insights. Version 6 is the starting point. We have embedded the opportunity to collect data. We as Globegap want to be the trusted data source, also a custodian for the data, so that farmers and retailers we trust that that data is in good hands with us, will really meet the requirements of data protection rights, etc., and, and then make it meaningful for the farmers first, but also to demonstrate how the whole system can improve. That's our big 2025 vision, that we are able with this data to demonstrate even more than today that using a global gap solution is actually improving a farmer improves, uh, has impact improvements, improves this for their own farm and for, for society. So you feel really the excitement, but Elmi, I guess there's also a lot of work still coming up uh, also for you then to develop everything if you hear what's uh, yeah, on Global Gap's mind for the next near future and also the next two years, right? Right, yeah. So as Christian mentioned, we're, we're working on training material. We're developing that for auditors, for producers, for anybody who's interested in implementing or helping producers to implement. The translations are, are coming up. Um, and then working with guidelines what, that we develop for producers, that the, as Guy mentioned before, national technical working groups also develop guidelines for their countries. So that will come up. And um, just making sure that the standard is, is following the right process, that everybody gets trained, that everybody understands it in the right way and can implement and audit it in the right way. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work to be doing and we're looking forward to the next year as a conversion period for the producers before they, they have to do this. Mm -hmm. And Leon, how, how difficult or how easy is it really to implement and in, in, uh, integrate it really in the retail chain all over the world? Well, there are, <clears throat> there are a few things that are important then. I mean, do we understand it ourselves, what it means? Can we communicate it to our suppliers? Is it logical? But also, is it combinable with all the other standards for other products that we are using? Because at the end, as a global retailer, we have so many products on the shelf that are also not global gap certified. And then comes the, the data approach comes in and the continuous improvement comes in because we need to have an aggregated carbon footprint figure at the end. So uh, all those building blocks together, this standard helps a lot to make that work. It's not the end, as Christian said, but it's an important building piece and a, an important foundation now. But it's also very crucial that we as a retail, and I think, I hope Guy, you will agree with that, that we are consistent in our ask to the growers, that we are predictable, that we are not changing every year again. Of course, it's developing, it's evaluating over time, but we need to be consistent in our ask for, from the farmers because they, we ask them to adapt over time. And if we can achieve that, actually, I think we have done our job. Mm -hmm. So let's ask Guy right away. So how, how yeah, difficult is it that to turn not a farm around, but adjust to the new developments and really bring it into the DNA of a farm, yes. I guess? Uh, we're relying on the work of the National yeah. Technical Working Group on that. What is, what is their job that is translating the, the, the standard, worldwide standard into the national situation? This means that um, we're looking into what already is uh, uh, done by the farms, what is in, in national legislation. So, and then translate this so that an auditor can come and see and, and look uh, if we comply with the, with the standard within the national situation. That's the work that has to be done. That will be uh, translated or, or brought to the farm. And then we will see uh, well, 
we don't know yet how impacting it will be, but we, we, we are confident that uh, at least the, we're complying with lots of uh, these control points already. Like with many or all of our standards, we do before intensive field trials. So it is in many countries already piloted. And then we build that as part of our uh, feedback loop, as part of our um, public consultation. We bring that back into the technical committees and adapt it. So the first waterproof has been, and the first proof, fireproof has been done. But yes, like any new car on the road, you've got to see how it performs in this area, which help brings us to that feedback loop we also have anyway. I mean, with digital, yes, we'll get more feedback, but also with our, what we call integrity program. Ernie mentioned that integrity is so important. We have our team that actually checks on top again, and they collect so much insight by redoing an audit and see, is this in the different countries being accepted? So these are our most highly um, calibrated experts with great language skills and auditing skills. And they will then check and give that feedback and regularly recalibrate. That helps us then to rebuild the risk assessments, the interpretation, the criteria. So it's a living, um, a living standard, always knowing, yes, food safety is critical. We don't want to you know, have any labs there. And we measure this improvement for sustainability to tell the story. In the end, it's about a good story, trusted storytelling to the consumer, which we, by the way, will do with our GGN label. We have this consumer label. We have mentioned today, but this IFA version six as well, will be the foundation to continue of this consumer label with consumer portals. So we do have the opportunity to tell farmer stories about all the activities they are doing and to being proud in the end. And that is my, my personal vision. Mm. I want farmers to be proud to use the standard. Guy, you asked, I think also said um, that a farmer would like to be on the farm and harvest the farm instead of sitting behind the computer. Yeah. I think this is very, it, it makes it very visual, really, what farming is about. So with the rollout of this new version 6 and the GRASP 2.0, do you think this is then happening, that really the farmers are more on the ground and harvest instead of sitting well, in front of not, the computer? Well, not tomorrow. We are looking forward to, to, be, to work on the farm more again. And uh, that, that's the main, uh, when we're talking about simplification and duplicate, avoid duplication. That's what we're talking about. Keep the farmer farming. Uh, and that's the most important job he can do. And if we talk about sustainability, let him work on sustainability, but let him really farm sustainability. Mm -hmm. So if you wrap it up and summarize it, what is in your own description, the IFA version six and GRASS 2.0, what is it? Well, it's it's complying with what the um, what what the consumers are asking for. So Leon, in your words, how would you summarize the IFA version six and also GRASP 2.0? It's keeping up with the market. And Elmi, it's kind of a little bit your baby with the development uh, as a product, the IFA version six and GRASP 2.0. How do you describe your baby? A range of solutions that we can offer our producers um, where they can pick really the standards that fits their needs the best, as well as showing compliance in the way that they are farming sustainability and sustainable. And um, really offering that, I think, is, is what we want to do to have to help. It's really to help producers to show what they're doing um, and have that visible, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you, I guess, agree to it, Christian? Well, absolutely. I think I would summarize it in my biggest wish is that we have now the highest potential ever of any version that the industry, every farmer, every stakeholder would say, this is our standard. Very good. This is our standard. Thank you very, very much, Christian, Elmi, and Leon and Guy. Thank you so much for coming Thank here you. for this panel discussion. And uh, thanks also to you for your time. And we really appreciate it.
So it was a lot of information. We really encourage you to go on the website of Global Gap and um, there you find more details. There are also free and sector specific webinars. We encourage you really to check them out. You can contact Global Gap, of course, via email to get further information. Yeah, and thanks again. Thank you and goodbye. So there, there you have it. Uh, the Global Gap team has presented a vision of the future that impresses us and challenges us. And, and I know we're all looking forward to seeing what impact these standards and add-ons will have as they're implemented in the weeks, months and years that lie ahead. There are many factors we all have to consider. Factors such as digitalization and simplification that can help the industry as a whole move to a much more smarter approach for the future of farming. And from here, as the rollout begins, the next step is to get ready for IFA version six and GRASP version two. As you will have heard, Global Gap is running a series of free webinars and these start on the 23rd of May when we'll explore these standards in more depth and in several languages. This includes scope specific insights to IFA version six for fruits and vegetables, for flowers and for ornamentals, and for aquaculture, as well as sessions on GRASP version two. So thank you so much for joining today. Uh, and to learn much more, as always, just go to the website globalgap.org. <laughs>